This video lesson is for my grade 10 students at St. Patrick's CBC in Kimberley, South Africa. It is mainly for those who are still at home during the pandemic as we continue with our hybrid approach to teaching. In this short video, we'll be discussing the September exam results. This video discussion should accompany all your lessons for the first week of our fourth term and you should have everything that you need for paper one which was written on Tuesday the 8th of September and paper two written on Monday the 14th of September. These slides are taken from the lesson plan which you should have accessed on Edmodo. By the end of this week, you should have gone over all your answers to paper one, the comprehension, the summary, the poetry, and the general language skills questions by comparing your answers to the provided marking guidelines, which are also posted on Edmodo. You'll also go over your answers, the long written answers to paper two, your Macbeth mini essay, your To Kill a Mockingbird literary essay, and the transactional writing. This was marked using the IEB rubrics, which you'll find on the SAGS document, which is also on Edmodo. I posted that for you at the beginning of the year. For the lesson, you should have in front of you the marked answer scripts from the September exams. These you should have collected from school already in the brown envelopes. They must be returned to school by next week, Monday. That is Monday the 12th of October. You also need your question papers for both paper one and paper two, and you were instructed to keep those hard copies of the question papers. If you've misplaced your papers, the soft copies are available on Edmodo. Just go back and find the date on which they were written. The marking guidelines have been posted on Edmodo for paper one. And as I said before, the rubrics are available in the IEB SAGS document. Have everything ready with you, including, of course, pen and highlighters would be useful as well. In this short week, I'd like you to spend the first lesson with paper one, and you need to go over every question and every answer in this paper. Please pay attention to the following points. Question one, have a look at your answers to the comprehension. Many of you struggled with the passage itself. You don't read carefully enough, and you're unable to identify the nuances in the writing. There was a fair bit of humor and satire in this passage about the Zool, um, Zuma Zool song that became popular during the pandemic. And if you missed that fine humor, then you misinterpreted some of the questions. I was also concerned that a number of you did not pay attention to the mark allocation per question. And as a result, many of you wrote rather superficially forgetting to P your answers. Remember the P structure is just a guideline and it's not only for literature questions. Even for comprehension and other longer answers, you should make your point, provide evidence for your point and then explain how that evidence substantiates your point. P your answers. Question two, the summary. The instructions were explicit and they have to always be followed to the letter. You were asked to write a paragraph and many of you lost unnecessary marks by writing point form summaries. You've really got to pay attention to the instructions. And then I was disappointed to see that some of you lied about the number of words you used. This is considered a very serious offence and as you have seen now that you have received your marked exam scripts, I really do count every word of every summary. Don't do that. It creates a very bad impression of you and your academic integrity. Please take note of the grade average for question one and question two. In matric, this would count as one test. 
and 62% um, for a grade average is not too bad. I like it to be in the 65-66% range. So considering the challenges of this year, I'm not too upset or fussed about that grade average. Please compare what you got to this average. Please have a look at question three, the scene poetry. Here you had to answer one very long question on Robert Frost's art art. And the biggest mistake here was that you completely underestimated the amount of writing, the length of the answer that was needed. Please compare the suggested answer that I've given to you on the marking guidelines to yours. Have a look at what I've highlighted or underlined and look where you could have written in more detail. You only had one poem to study for this section due to the pandemic and the change in lesson plans. Um, so that makes your poor showing in this question very, very concerning. In a normal year, you would have had 10 to 15 poems to study for question three, the scene poetry section. So I am concerned about that. Question four, the unseen poem, was treated somewhat superficially and many of you once again ignored the mark allocation and certainly didn't apply the P answering technique to your answers. As a result, the average for question three and question four, the poetry questions, is only 55%. And given that you had so few poems to study, um, that's not pleasing at all. In fact, I'm very, very concerned about that. So please have a look at your answers and try and strategize about how you can write in more detail in the allocated time. Once you've looked at the poetry questions, please look at the remaining two questions on paper one, five and six the general language and textual editing questions. And before we look at your answers, just have a look at that appalling grade average, 48%. Almost everything that I asked in these questions, I covered in the online grammar lessons during terms two and three of our online pandemic or lockdown lessons. I even used the same cartoons and some of the same questions that I had used in these video lessons. So what this tells me is that the majority of you did not do the lessons, and if you did, you certainly didn't do them properly. A 48% grade average for questions five and six has me just about tearing my hair out. Grade tens, you have to do better than this. In the second lesson this week, I'd like you to go over all of your answers to paper two. You will need the IEB SAGS document rubrics with you as well. Question one, the mini essay on Macbeth was poorly written. You did have a dedicated video lesson on how to write a literary essay using Macbeth as an example but it appears that most of you did not watch that video, and if you did, you certainly didn't apply the knowledge that was given to you there. The structure of these essays is so important. If you look at the rubric, you'll see how many marks or levels are geared simply to how you write the essay as opposed to what you write in it. And for grade 10, I give you the five paragraph template to use which guarantees you a good structure. And those of you who didn't do that have paid a very dear price in marks. Some of the common problems in the mini essay you will see listed on the screen. A basic one, you don't differentiate between the title of the play and the name of the main character. So if you're referring to the play Macbeth, it must be in inverted commas or underlined. Whereas when you're referring to the man, the character Macbeth, then you spell it as a normal name, capital M and nothing else. In your essay, very few of you provided a thesis statement with the summary of your argument in the introductory paragraph. 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, you need to go back and watch that video lesson on how to write a Macbeth essay. And although it's not so penalized in any way, you are discouraged from using the first person pronoun I. I was stunned that a number of you began your essays with, in this essay, I shall be telling you X, Y, and Z. We do not do that in English literary essays, so please break that habit. And again, some of you lied about your word count. Um, guys, I've been teaching for almost 40 years. I can look at a page and see whether the word count is accurate or not. And some of you didn't provide a word count. Please get into the habit of providing a word count for question one that is required in your matric final exam. So we are practicing now for those finals. And then one dear soul wrote that the play that we studied, Macbeth, was written by Walter Saunders. Now, I imagine that that's a far more exciting play than the one that the rest of us studied by William Shakespeare. You know who you are. Have a look at the grade average, 52%, nothing to be proud of. See how you did in comparison to the grade. And some of you thought that because you were writing at home, you could just go onto the internet, find an essay and copy it or sections of it and pass it off as your own work. I'm horrified that you think that that's okay. There is an academic integrity policy in place at school. Um, there will be disciplinary steps taken. Your names have been noted. But the sad thing is that now when I look at you, the first word that comes into my head is oh, academically dishonest. You don't want me to think that when I look at you, do you? Please do your own work. Question two offered you a choice of essay topics on To Kill a Mockingbird. And those of you who chose 2.1, the question that referred to Scott as the narrator of the novel, were given a template, a planning template to use. And very few of you use this. I don't know why not, because it gave you a clear structure for your essay. So if you are given aids like that in an exam, you're really foolish if you don't use them. So please have a look at these sort of crutches that you are given. They're there for a reason and they're there to make your lives a lot easier and to speed up your time usage in the exam. So don't underestimate the value of such extras in an exam again. And again, your grade average is not good. I must say, however, that for both Macbeth and Mockingbird, a number of you were penalized with zeros, and that has had an effect on the grade average. And those penalties were because of the aforementioned cheating, the plagiarism of questions, answers, and sections. The last two questions of paper two, three, and four, the transactional writing, were not that well answered. I was fairly lenient with my marking and I'm concerned that a number of you have no clue as to what the format of specific pieces must be. So if there's a speech or a formal letter or an open letter, you need to know how to write them. Remember the pages in the XKIT book were given to you in the exam information booklet you really need to revise the formats. Um, have a look at what you've written and look at the two marks that have been written below each of your pieces and read all of that information on the IEB transactional writing rubric. And you'll see that that is a fairly lengthy comment then on what you have written and how you wrote it in terms of both content and structure. A 55% average for transactional writing, it's 10% below where it should be. The bottom line, grade 10, is that it's clear 
you didn't watch all of the video lessons during the lockdown period and you certainly didn't prepare well enough for the September exams. At the end of the year, you are writing your promotion exams and they will have to be written at school. So those of you who have cheated have actually shot yourself in the foot as you now have a lot more to learn and revise than your friends who try to do everything on their own. Um, guys, I've spent hours and hours making these video lessons for you, trying to make this whole pandemic time period as easy for you as possible. Um, in vain, it seems. In vain. There are a few of you who have been working consistently and have been dedicated and working hard. I commend you. You will be rewarded at the end of the year when you write the promotion exams. For the rest of you, it's not too late. The wonderful thing about these video lessons is that you've got them on tap, that you can still go back and do all of the lessons again. All of the lesson plans, the exercises, the worksheets, everything is available for you on Edmodo and on YouTube. So start now. Let's put this right, grade 10s. That's it from me for today. If you need anything, you know how to get hold of me. And for my own students, the preferred method is Edmodo. For anybody else, if you would like a soft copy of the grade 10 question papers and marking guidelines, you're more than welcome to drop me an email at the address you see on the screen.